All right. Well, good morning, church. It's always so glad to hear the conversations happening before church hour. It's a good sign of some good, healthy fellowship taking place. And so that's always exciting to hear and to be a part of. And we're so glad that you could be here this morning to worship with us. If you don't know me, I'm Pastor Brian. Pastor Tom's up roaming around, greeting people still. And so I think on behalf of both of us, I could say, again, we're so glad that you're here this morning to worship together with us. I just want to go over a few announcements this morning, uh, just so that some things can be on your radar. Hopefully when you came in, you grabbed a bulletin. And so this has everything that's happening uh, that's coming up that we want you to know about and to be aware of so that you can join with us. One thing that's not in there that we want to remind you of is that the youth group is heading to Lark Ranch this afternoon at one o'clock. We would like to leave the church. And so um, if you can make sure if you've signed up to go with us, you could be here uh, at or before one o'clock so we can load up and hit the road because we have a little bit of a trip to get there. Um, but it's going to be a great afternoon. Again, going out and just having a good time together. So uh, we just want to remind the youth of that. Uh, next Sunday is a busy Sunday. And so uh, there's a lot of things in the bulletin that kind of hint at that. Um, one thing you'll see in there is that it's Pastor Appreciation Sunday. And along with that, in the evening, there's going to be a chili supper, a chili cook-off. And so you can still sign up to be a part of that um, if you'd like to make your world-famous chili um, and enter it in the contest to try to dethrone Pastor Tom. That's my whole goal. So, uh, you know, so if you want to, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to be a great time. We're going to be here at 5 o'clock in the evening for that. Um, but after church next Sunday, we have a congregational meeting. And so we'd encourage as many of you as possible to stick around afterwards so that you can be a part of that. Uh, there'll be some voting going on and some different information that you'll want to hear and be a part of. And so uh, we'd ask you to come and to be a part of that. Uh, if you're heading to Branson, that's tomorrow morning at 7.30 sharp, I think it says in here. Emphasis on the sharp. So uh, if you're heading on that trip, make sure that you're here and you're ready to go um, for that great opportunity. If you're not going, be praying for them for safe travels and a good time. If you want to come out and pray with them beforehand, uh, I'm sure you're welcome and encouraged to come and to be a part of that as well. One thing that we're gearing up for at the end of the month is treats and treasures. And so some of you have already signed up for that. You can still sign up. There's still the sign-up sheet out there. We would love to have more stations for the kids to come and to be a part of. And so if you want to join us in that, you can sign up. You don't have to have necessarily a game, uh, but just a theme, something where they can come through and we can interact with the community is what we're asking. And so you can join us by doing that. One of the other ways you can partner with us is we're going to need a lot of candy. And so we have a little tote out there where you can come and drop off candy for us that we can pass out. Uh, I saw I was at Walmart last night. They still have tons. And so uh, if you'd like to join us in helping, you say, I don't think I can be there that night, but I can buy some candy. That would definitely help and go a long way. And so if you wouldn't mind doing that, praying about how you can join us, again, we'll still invite you to come and set up a space or you can donate the candy. If you have any questions, you can see myself or Juanita. We're uh, kind of co-heading this up this year. And so I'm learning with it being my first one. So we may try some new things. We may try some things that have already been done. But either way, it's going to be a great time. But in order for it to be a success, we have to show up. And so that's what we're asking. Again, is for you to pray about how you can join us in this opportunity to minister to our community and to connect with the community where God has placed us to be. And so that's all the announcements I have for you this morning. Hmm? Oh, Dave. Yep, Dave's going to come up, and he's going to talk a little bit about next Sunday. Uh, as Pastor Brian said, next uh, Sunday is our con congregational meeting. And with our Constitution, we announce uh, the previous Sunday's on nominations and major events of the meeting. One thing that will be coming up is a voting uh, of the Constitution change uh, to meet on the third Sunday of the month instead of the second. Um, 
the following nominations or the following are the nominations for the nom from the nominating committee for the 2024 leadership board and as i read your name if you would stand so everybody has the opportunity to recognize uh, who we are uh, promoting um, the following are elected annually for one year term moderator paul hodgen oh thank you uh, as people move around, I get lost. Uh, parliamentarian, Howard Brooks. Uh, treasurer, Carla Plessinger. Assistant Treasurer, Donna Myers. Okay. Um, and then for the, uh, for the following are elected for a three-year uh, term, uh, Scott Hackett. Roger Smith, and Nick Pearson. Thank you. Um, if Carla is elected, she is currently on the leadership board, but is, uh, if she's elected as treasurer, the nominating committee would nominate Kenny Lyons. And I don't see Kenny right off. Uh, to finish her uh, term of one year on the leadership board. The nominations will be open from the floor during the congregation meeting. You must have permission from the candidate prior to nominating them. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Will you join me in prayer this morning as we worship together? Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for another opportunity where we could come together this morning. And we can do just that, that we could worship you in, in this place together, Lord. And as always, we pray that you would just be stirring our hearts this morning, uh, that you would be challenging us anew and afresh in our walk with you. And I pray if there's anyone here this morning, Lord, who doesn't know you, that you would continue to work in their hearts, that you would reveal yourself to them this morning. And again, those of us who have been walking with you many years, Lord, again, I pray that you would just challenge us anew here this morning, that you would rekindle that fire inside each and every one of us, that you would show us new and exciting ways to serve you here where you've called us to be. And we just pray this this morning, and we ask that you would just be with those who are going to lead us, whether it's through musical worship or Pastor Tom, uh, as he leads us in opening your word here this morning, Lord. Again, we ask you to move in a mighty way, and we pray this all in your name. Amen.
God, we give back this morning because you are so good and so gracious to each and every one of us, Lord. And so I pray as we give this morning, we do so cheerfully, uh, knowing that you are going to do great things, uh, that you've entrusted us to give so that we can continue to do ministry and reach those here in this community who don't know you, or who maybe have heard of you but uh, haven't made those decisions yet. And so we pray that, again, as we give, we do so not just out of obligation or because we feel like we have to, but because we want to, again, because we see the ways in which you've blessed us, and we want to give so that you might continue to do great things here where you've called us again. So we just pray, Lord, over what's given this morning, again, that you would just multiply it, that you would use it to just reach this community with your name and for your glory, and it's in your name that we pray, Lord. Amen. of angels above, singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy, God almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside me, God No truer words spoken about our God. Well, it is time this morning for our FBC Kids Church. If you have a child with us today up through fifth grade, it's their chance to head back to our children's church. They get to learn about Jesus, have games, snacks, dancing, crafts. I'm just trying to rub it all into you guys now. I'm just keep going. All the fun stuff they get. 
All right. Well, again, thank you for being here. I am Pastor Tom. Pastor Brian mentioned that. Pastor Brian's the guy who was doing announcements. Purple shirt up here. We're continuing our look this morning at prayer. Um, some of the things that we've talked about, well, actually a lot of the things that we've talked about last week and then again this week are gonna sound very basic, and they should. But what we're gonna see is as we start compounding these understandings, it should put you in a place where you better understand prayer and what we're doing with it. We got a few different passages this morning we're gonna look at, uh, very similar to last week. Instead of picking a passage and just working through it, we're answering a question by looking into scripture and drawing out some of the examples. Before we get into these passages, I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, again, we thank you for today and the opportunity you've given us to be here, to come freely without persecution. We pray this morning that we would receive your word, Lord, that you would speak to me and through me, and whatever challenges I bring to this message, you would overcome them, that each person here would receive what you have for them to receive. Lord God, we thank you. We pray now that your word would be implanted deep into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before we get going, am I echoey? Does anyone hear echo? No? Real close to echo? I don't know if we can just turn it back and touch maybe. All right. Well, again, I mentioned we're working through a series looking at prayer and kind of answering different questions to help us better answer the big question of what is prayer. And today we're looking at the when as we talk about prayer. So our key point one, when should we pray? What's your answer to that? Always, all the time. Any other thoughts? No? Huh? They're good and bad. All right. Well, as a pastor, and honestly just a believer, I have heard so many questions, so many different thoughts, so many different concerns about when we should pray. So those of you who spoke up and said always, I want you to understand that there's many people who don't share that understanding. Right? So we're going to look at that a little bit this morning. There's a few different passages we're going to draw from, and we're going to kind of build a big picture that hopefully, again, gives us a better understanding of what's going on. So a lot of times when we think about prayer, we think about what I call convenient prayer, easy prayer, expected prayer. How many of you pray before a meal? How many of you pray before a meal out in public? How many of you pray before bed? During an illness? Right? There's certain things that kind of fall in the, oh, this is the expectation of when we pray. Those are what I call easy prayers, convenient prayers, the prayers that people expect. So, what about this? How many of you pray when you're driving down the road? Right? We were here the other day, and Kenny was here, who's not here this morning. He was a, a former over-the-road truck driver, and he was explaining that he called his truck his rolling prayer box or something like that. He had hours on the road, and he was able to just pray. And I've shared that I, I pray like that. Kind of a, a long thing. Whenever I'm able to, whenever there's nothing, I can pray. But that, again, is convenient. I said, whenever there's nothing else, I can pray. Well, I should paint a little picture there. When I got time, then I pray. So I call those convenient prayers, easy prayers. How many of you pray when it's not convenient? Like when you get up late for work and you have to rush to get there on time, but you really should have prayed to start your day. How many of you still say, I'm gonna stop and pray? 
Or maybe when you're very angry, you feel bitter, you feel frustrated. Are you going to pray? Those are a little bit more difficult. We need to understand that prayer is more than a convenient little walkie-talkie. We're going to look at a passage here in a second that I'm going to set up a little bit. So I mentioned some convenient prayers, easy prayers of praying for meals and praying at bed and all those things. So I've asked people, I used to ask the men when I would lead my men's group in my last church, when should we pray? And those were the kind of answers we got. Ah, well, meal time, bedtime, when you give thanks. It's like, all right. Like, when are those? Ah, it depends when we eat. It depends when we go to bed. Like, fair enough. Now, the Jews had a set prayer time. They knew at these times they would drop what they're doing and pray. So they would pray during the third hour of the day and then again in the ninth hour of the day. This would equate to about 9 a.m. and then again at 3 p.m. Do you know who else has devoted prayer time? Muslims. They have set times throughout the day that whatever they're doing, it stops and they pray. Now, that's a completely different conversation. But what I want you to see is that the Jews, even before Jesus had a set time, and other religions recognized the importance of the concept of prayer. Now, we don't believe they're praying to God, but they focus on the importance of prayer. And then we talk to Christians, and the answer we mostly get is when I got my food to say thank you and Lord lay me down to sleep, right? There's a real disconnect in the comparison. So why do the Jews have these dedicated prayer times? Well, because it's important. Let's look at this this concept here. And not just because it's a rule, but Paul teaches this as he's sending his letter to the church in Colossae, right? So Colossians 4.2 is what we're going to look at. Lord God, let us receive your word and speak to us. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. If you're devoted to something, what does that mean? Any thoughts? Committed? It's important to you? You do what needs to be done to make it a priority? Right? Be devoted to it. Paul is sending this letter to a church. Now, it's not like First Baptist Church. It's like the church of Greencastle. There was the Christian church in that city, in Colossae, right? And Paul's saying, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Now, the watchful and thankful are something we'll look at later in the how to pray. But devote yourself to prayer. If you're devoted to something, do you do it just when it's convenient? No. Do you do it just when you feel like it? No. So Paul's telling a church, an entire group, be devoted to prayer. One of the best ways to be devoted to something is to recognize the challenges that prevent your devotion. If I say I can't get up on time to pray in the morning, I'm going to set an alarm to get up in the morning because I know it's a challenge. If you're an athlete and you gotta get up to exercise, you set a specific regiment of exercise. I'm gonna get up at this time and do this. Then tomorrow I'm gonna do this. You set up a plan. So when we look at the Jews in their structure of having dedicated prayer times, they understood the world got busy. They understood there were obligations to their time and energy. So they set standards. We will pray the third hour of the day, ninth hour of the day. They knew those times were set aside to pray. 
so they could be devoted, that every day they would have specific times to be in prayer. So does that mean that we should only pray at dedicated times? That we should set specific times and only pray during those times? Well, I think we know the answer to that. But no, prayer should not be restricted to only those times, but those times are set in place so that they knew they could at least give specific time to prayer. Because all of you, I would imagine, can admit that when your day gets going, it's very, very easy to bypass things that don't hold you accountable. Now, if we don't pick up our kids from school or something, they'll call us and whine and complain, so we have to answer for that. Maybe the answer is, oh, we were busy, we just forgot you. But when we don't pray, generally speaking, God doesn't come down and go, you didn't pray to me yesterday. Why? That's not fair. And so it becomes easier and easier for us to just move on our day and not give the time to prayer. So another thing, we look ahead and Paul writes again to more churches about prayer. This time we're gonna look in his letter to the church in Thessalonica, right? First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The message here is clear. Always, continually, in all circumstances, this is God's will for you. Let's look again at another letter. Paul's writing this one to the church in Ephesus, Ephesians 6, 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers in request. With this in mind, be alert and always, keeping, or, and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Continually, all occasions. I'm telling you folks, we don't do that. And if you're honest, you're gonna say the same thing. We just don't. We've become a church culture of convenience in so many ways, and prayer is often one of them. Again, I just gave you three examples from Paul to entire churches. This is not an individual challenge. This is not a Tom Blodgett challenge only, a Landon challenge only. This is a believer challenge. Even shortly after Jesus was there, they, all the miracles, all the stuff, Paul is having to write letters of instruction to entire churches, telling them to pray on all occasions at all times, right, without ceasing. It demonstrates a need to remain focused and in connection with God. Now there's a couple different understandings that you will see as you, as you look through uh, different commentaries and check on different theological perspectives, different pastors, you're usually gonna come to two different uh, understandings of what this means. One is a continual state of a prayerful spirit. The other is an actual ongoing continued conversation with God throughout your day. How many of you are taught that when you say amen, your prayer stops? I'm the only one. I'm the only one that when I pray and I said amen, that was the end of the prayer. We could open our eyes and get on with it. All right, let me ask it again. How many of you had been taught that saying amen, your prayers were done? Okay, that's what we're taught. Even if we didn't have a Bible lesson teaching us that, I stand up here Sunday morning, Pastor Brian stands up here, and I'm gonna argue probably 99% of other pastors stand up there Sunday morning, they'll pray, they'll say amen, and they'll resume something else. That's what we do. 
So what one school of thought here is saying is, instead of that mindset, it's Lord God, as we open the day and we're praying, and we don't say amen. And throughout the day, as we say, thank you for today, that's just paragraph two of the initial prayer. Lord God, help me through my frustrations. Paragraph three of the initial prayer. As you lay your head down in bed, you're about to fall asleep. Thank you for another day, Lord. You are good. Amen. And now you're sleeping. That's the idea of a continual prayer throughout the day. That all day long, you are in communication with God. You're not sending him little postcards, or for those of you who are teenagers or whatever, you're not sending out little tweets, you know, 50 characters and have to get your message across and then it's done. You are in communication with God all day long. We talked several months ago, I think it was a couple months ago, amen is not a, we're done, exclamation point. It actually symbolizes, you know, let it be. You pray something, you're praying something, amen, you're in agreement but we use it as an ending. It's not an ending. So you have those two different understandings. One, a continual prayerful spirit, which is basically what every believer should have, or then the more literal understanding of a continual conversation with God throughout the day. That is important. Okay, I'm gonna point this out, and I'm sure none of you are guilty of this, especially Dylan. You good, buddy? Okay. When we pray and we say amen and then we get, someone cuts us off on the highway. None of you say anything negative, right? I've shared with you before and I'm not gonna be specific this time. I know a pastor who communicated openly about flipping people off when he was driving on the highway. And in my head, like, how is it we're praying to God the creator, asking him to guide us and lead us and care for us. We say amen, and we think he puts muffs on his ears? He don't hear me no more. I said amen. Come on, folks. You know better than that. But we don't think like that. We think we can put God in this box. No, you communicate with me when I say we communicate, God. So when I say, Heavenly Father, then you can listen. But as soon as I say, Amen, we're done, okay? Let me do what I want to do. Does that make any sense to any of you? (laughs) No, but we all do it. (laughs) We all do it. And we shouldn't. Now, I am an absolute advocate for individual specific prayers, and Jesus himself gave us the example in the Lord's Prayer. The disciples said, hey, how do we pray? And he gave the example of how to pray, and he prayed a specific prayer set. So we're supposed to do that, but the continual prayerful spirit is something that should carry you through your day. If you've ever been around teenagers or preteens, you've probably experienced the rebellion where they don't even want to do something they love to do because they're rebelling. I'm in a bad mood. I don't want to be happy. Hmm. I'm using my son as an example because I can. This just happened the other day, right, buddy? He had a football game. They won. They won. It was, a, it was a good, fun game. They, they did great. You know, he was out there playing defense. He made one silly mistake, and it was hilarious. Kid was on the ground, and my son belly flopped on him. He just ran up, looked like a fish. He's like, Meh, and flopped on him. Got a penalty. We thought it was hilarious. He comes home that night. They won. He comes home, <clears throat> and I'm laughing about this little flish flop. I'm like, you just, you just dogpiled this dude. There was no reason for it. You dogpiled him. He's like, Dad, stop. I want to be mad. I'm like, I'm just telling you the truth. It was funny. Stop. I don't want to laugh. I want to be angry. I'm not going to laugh at something funny. And we do that. We think we can do that to God. God's like, hey, I know you're upset. Look, though, you, you've got food, you've got a house. 
You've got a family. You have salvation. It's okay. I'm here to talk. And instead we go, mm, I'm not talking to you. It doesn't work like that, folks. Our Father, we talked about this last week, our Father hears. Not only does our Father hear, our Father listens. And it's not just when we say, Heavenly Father, listen. If that was the case, there would be no need for Scripture telling us that the Holy Spirit intercedes and we don't know what to say. It's a prayerful spirit. We're in communication with our Heavenly Father. You see kids, teachers see this all the time, parents see it all the time. The kids don't have to say a word, but they communicate very loudly to their parents. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Obviously. Our Father knows our needs, knows what's going on. You are communicating with him all the time, whether you realize it or not. The intentionality of prayer makes it vital because it frames your mind to be communicating with God. We must do that. Keep our hearts and minds in an ongoing state of prayer because when we do that, it frames the way we think. It frames the way we act, the words we say, when we remember that God is listening to us. Too often we think we can put them in a box, bring them out when we say, Heavenly Father, and put them back and we say, Amen. That is not the way it works. I've told my kids before, I care about you even when you're mad at me, even when you don't want me to. And that's God. Even when you want to be away and not talk to him, he's listening. Keep that in your mind. Frame your day, your life in prayer. You remember that as you walk through the grocery store, you're with the Spirit. So you're with God. What you say is heard. Who you present yourself to be is seen. The conversations you have, you're having with God. So that leads me to another question pertaining to when we pray. You're going to see, if, if you do any theological study or look into when we should pray, you're going to see different thoughts presented. You just are. But one question that is under constant conversation is, is there a point we should stop praying? So now we're not going to go there today, but there is scripture that talks about stop praying for them, treat them as if they're one of the bad ones. We're not talking about that. We're talking about in general. I've had people in conversations, when you pray to God, and maybe you don't get what you're praying for, now let me pause there. Boop, pause button again. You no, or I hope you know, this is not talking about, Lord God, I pray for a million dollars in the mailbox. Lord God, I pray for a million dollars in the mailbox. That's not what we're talking about. We know that when we pray, we're supposed to pray within the will of the Lord for the Lord's will because we know what the Lord's will is or we should be pursuing what the Lord's will is. So anyways, when we pray for something, you're not supposed to stop. Until he tells you to. Now, how can I say that? Well, let me look at the book of Luke. Luke records Jesus teaching his followers. Luke 18:1. And it's just a very introduction of what happens here. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Okay, that right there opens up a story, a parable of a woman in a certain town and a judge in a certain town, the same town. And this woman is asking for legal protection from the judge. And the judge says, no, he's not doing it. He just ignores her. No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. And she keeps coming back. Please give me protection. Please give me protection. 
She's coming to this judge and asking him, the only one who can give her protection. And he keeps saying no, and she keeps coming. And finally, he gives in and gives her protection. And this parable tells us clearly, this judge did not fear God, so it wasn't a God thing. He acknowledges with his own words, the only reason he gave in is because she wormed down. He was annoyed with her. She wore him down. Like, I will give in. Stop showing up in my office. Now, to me, I'm reading that. I'm like, wait a minute, God. Are you telling me I can wear you down? Are you telling me if I keep praying, you'll get to the point of saying, ah, no, I don't believe that's the case. Instead, what I believe the case is, when we continually go to God, we are recognizing he is the only one with the authority to give anything. So, so many times, and I was taught this, so many times it was, oh, you prayed for it, you didn't get it, stop asking. Because if you ask again, it's lack of faith. And then they would throw a scripture at you, pray for it, believe, and act like you've got it. Scripture says that. But here's the understanding we have to have. When we pray for something and believe in it, if it's the Lord's will, we will get it, even if we haven't got it. So there is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, it's encouraged, as we see here, by Jesus himself to say, Lord God, I asked for this. I believe it's your will. I'm ready to receive it. Lord God, I have yet to receive this. Your word tells me I'll receive understanding and wisdom if I ask for it. I haven't received it yet. I'm still waiting. Jesus taught the people, you're supposed to continue to pursue him. And it's crazy to me because so many churches teach you, ask once, leave it alone, because if you ask again, you don't have any faith. Now we know if we look at the bigger picture, we know that's not true because the Lord's prayer was something that he gave us to pray, not to pray once. And you're asking for things in that prayer. So we need to get this understanding, this, this pre-teaching in our mind, we have to get it out. Because the churches have done this for so long that we've taught by example that prayer is limited, that God only is available when we say Heavenly Father, and we'll be closed with amen. We've taught believers and church attenders that it's not right to continually pursue the Lord in prayer for things. Now again, within the Lord's will. This is not asking for a million dollars in your mailbox. Okay? This is not a prosperity thing where you can earn or, or negotiate your way to riches. This is pursuing what the Lord wants for you. And we can do this because we know God cares for his children. I could have went in and got many other passages where it talks about the good gifts of the Father and how much better gifts from the Father and, and how he values you more than the sparrows that he feeds every day. Countless examples. And yet we sit here and we think God only cares when we pray formally to him at certain times. Prayer is a matter of relationship. I've used the example before, I'll use it again. You cannot have a good relationship without any communication. You can't. As I've sat with many different couples for different forms of counseling and even dating couples, one of the big things that always comes up is he doesn't listen, she doesn't listen. We don't even talk anymore. And it's like, what am I gonna do? If you're acknowledging right now that you acknowledge you're not talking to each other and communicating, how are you going to come together? How are you going to grow together? The same thing is true for your relationship with the Lord. If you're not taking dedicated, intentional time to seek him, to communicate with him, to pray to him, to connect with him, why do you think you're gonna grow in relationship with him?
even when you read scripture. If you don't pray before you read scripture, you're missing out. We as believers have to change the example we show the world on what it means to pray. We have to. Because right now the world sees prayer as what I just told you, a convenience thing, something we do for convenience, for ease, or during times of ease, to make a show. But we know we're talking to God. And so when we say we need to pray continually all the time, we need to put that into action. We need to bathe the things we do every day in prayer. Your frustrations in prayer, your praises in prayer. That needs to be the example we give. And as we understand that, as we start putting that into practice, we're one step closer to answering the question, what is prayer? We acknowledged last week who we're talking to, who's all involved. We talked this week about it is when we pray, always. And why is it always? Because of who we pray to. It doesn't matter if you know the person you're praying for. It doesn't matter if you are happy about the situation you're praying for. It doesn't matter if it's midnight or 6 a.m., the third hour or the ninth hour. It doesn't matter because you are talking to God. And it's him who does the work, not you. So it doesn't matter what you think. It's God. Prayer is so powerful. We need to get that back into the center of who we are as believers. That God has given us this opportunity, folks. Use it. Every day, bathe your day in prayer. Bathe your family in prayer. Your decisions, your challenges, your joys. I've told you this before. We're going to close here, but one thing that I've done intentionally in my own life, just me personally, one of my favorite things that I do is I thank the Lord for being an artist. It's one of the things that I've changed in my life as I've grown up, that there are many mornings I'll drive and I'll see the sunrise and I'll go, God, that's beautiful. Great job today. I've made it intentional to recognize his newness and goodness every day. I'm out there deer hunting, I'll sit up there and go, wow, Lord, how did you decide to make these leaves that color? That is God. He wants that kind of conversation. It's not just the spiritual things, the theological things. He wants you to communicate with him as your father. And when we get that in here and get that in here, you're gonna do it a whole lot more often. Frame your heart in that understanding that prayer is our ability to talk to the creator and not just talk to the creator, to hear from the creator. He loves you and he wants to talk to you. If you're sitting here this morning and you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm gonna tell you it starts with a prayer. The Holy Spirit will be stirring and at work in you and you need to pray out, cry out to God. How do you do that? You acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. What's a sinner? A sinner, someone who's living separate from God. Someone who has not yet received forgiveness and salvation through the person of Jesus Christ. That's a sinner. You acknowledge that that is you and that you don't want to be that any longer. That you desire to know Jesus Christ as your savior. That you believe Jesus is the son of God, fully human, fully God. That he lived a perfect life and was then murdered upon a cross. He died. And you believe that he rose three days later conquering sin and conquering death. For what? So that we may be forgiven. And because we're forgiven and covered in the righteousness of Christ, 
we can have conversation with God. Prayer. You acknowledge that and you say in your heart, in your mind, Lord Jesus, forgive me and be my savior. And when that occurs, when your heart and your mind makes that commitment, that observation, that recognition, that declaration, you are a child of God. But not until that happens. That prayer is the only prayer we know from Scripture that absolutely God listens to for the unbeliever. If you're sitting here as a believer that's walked with the Lord for many years, I encourage you and I challenge you to be more intentional in when you pray. Keep track of when you pray and watch how it looks. Oh, I pray for my meals, I pray for bed. I pray when someone's sick. You're gonna see a pattern and I challenge you to fix it. Cover your day in prayer, the decisions you make, the challenges you face, the joys you share. Bathe it all in prayer and watch what it does to your relationship. It's a beautiful blessing that we don't take advantage of. With all that said, I'm gonna invite you to pray with me again this morning. Lord God, we thank you for today, the opportunity you've given us to get into your word, Lord. And the beauty for me, Lord, something I love to see is how you take the simplicity of truth and you can put it in so many different ways, Lord. It's my prayer this morning that each one of us would frame our days better in prayer, that we would make sure we have a state of continual prayerfulness in our hearts. Lord, we pray as First Baptist Church you would revive our prayer lives, that you would help us to remember and recognize the challenges we face, to remember that you care for us so much that you desire to share in communication with us, conversation. Lord, I pray for those here right now who may not know you as Lord. I pray that your spirit would continue to work upon their heart, continue to stir them, draw them, and I pray, Lord God, that they would be emboldened to stand receive you Lord, I thank you for entrusting us with that beautiful opportunity of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus is Lord over all, and that is the truth. And prayer is a gift for each believer to draw close to the Lord. As you leave today, remember that everything you do can and should be bathed in prayer. It will change the way you walk your life as a follower of Christ. Lord God, we pray this morning that your spirit would fill us, refresh us, that as we walk about our day, we would remember to frame everything we do in prayer. That we would seek you and lay things at your feet. That we would thank you and just conversate with you. Lead us, Lord. May your peace and encouragement be upon everyone here and at home. May you be glorified through the lives we live. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.